before. Naveen is not coming. Last time what we discussed was a representation on one particle massive states. And we found that total number of states in a multiplet were 2 to the 2 n. And for n equal to 1, total number was to the 2 n, right? Yes. Is for n equal to 2, this number is what, 16, right? 16 and so forth and so on. What we discuss is representation of Suzy algebra. Representation of Suzy algebra on or one particle massless states. So you can uh, a massless particle can always be studied in a light cone frame. Light cone frame means take the four momentum P mu to have components E in the time direction 0, 0, and E in one of the space directions. We are working in C equal to 1 units. So that P mu, P mu is E square minus E square is 0. That's what a massless particle is. P square is 0. A massless particle is also described is also described described by its helistates. By its helistate instead of state. Massive particle representation we gave mass and the spin. <coughs> but a massive particle has zero mass and it's described by helicity instead of spin. What's helicity for us? There's a poly Lubansky. vector w mu which is defined as half minus epsilon mu nu alpha beta e mu and alpha beta. generators of the translation p mu four of them and generators of the Lorentz rotations and if you take the zeroth component of this object which is minus half epsilon 0 i j k p j m p i j k. Epsilon 0 i j k is simply an epsilon i j k or maybe let me use 
L M N L M N This object is defined to be minus 1 times epsilon, so that takes care of minus. Now, ep half epsilon mn, uh, half epsilon lmn times mmn is the rotation generator. So helistic is normalized W0, call it a lambda, is W0 divided by E, which is J dot P divided by E. And since P is for us is only in the z direction, it simply measures jz. P is in z direction and there's value e that e cancels this one, so it simply is it. Now from the exercises that we did earlier, we know What is the commutator of P with Q? That is here. Commutator of J, J is a component of M, the all generators M, and we had given the prescription of how it transforms, uh, how the commutator of J with respect to supercharges is. You use that relation and you can work it out that it's half sigma L alpha beta q beta i something i missed sigma l p l this p l is here and i think in my notes i have done some error there I wrote it sigma mu p mu there, so correct it. It is sigma l p l. So therefore, from here, if I evaluate w zero commutator with q alpha i, that is simply minus half. So that is W0, right? So W0 is simply yes, the same thing. And now for me, in the light cone frame that I have chosen, P is only in the Z direction. Therefore, it's simply minus half sigma Z times E of alpha beta q beta i.
So therefore, if I operate W0 times Q alpha i on a state which is with a given E energy and a given helicity lambda. This commutator tells me that this is same as Q alpha times W0 on that state minus E by 2 sigma z alpha beta Q beta i on that state. Now W0 on helicity eigenstate is simply E. So I have E Q alpha I E times lambda minus E by 2 Q Z alpha beta Q beta I. And let me rewrite this as E times something I missed. This is E times lambda, right? So I have lambda minus half sigma z alpha beta q beta i. Lambda times a unit matrix, two cross two, which I have not written, right? So here's a unit matrix, which is delta alpha beta minus half so w0 by e let me write this equation in components now q1i on state e lambda and q2i on state e lambda Write these components, alpha 1 and 2 are components explicitly. When I have the upper component, sigma 3, sigma 3 is diagonal, plus 1 and minus 1. Sigma 3 is a diagonal matrix, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So this simply gives me lambda minus half q1 i on e lambda acting on this and lambda plus half q2 i So this is the helicity operator. So helicity operator acting on a state q1 times the state and q times on the one uh, on the uh, time state is lambda minus half for q1 acting on the state and lambda plus half. So what this tells me is that q alpha i lowers the helicity by half unit and q alpha 2 increase the helicity by half unit. So this implies Q alpha i lowers helicity by half unit and Q 2i lowers helicity by well, increases helicity by half unit. For every i, 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 I is the number of 
सुपर सिमेट्रीज आई एक वन टू थ्री फोर एन Now let me rewrite the supersymmetry algebra in this light cone frame. Uh, remember, we are doing no central charge. So Q alpha i anti commutator with Q beta j anti commutator is zero. Q alpha dot i bar, Q beta dot bar j anti commutator is zero, and Q alpha i, Q <coughs> beta j bar dot is twice delta i j sigma mu. U mu alpha alpha beta dot. This is what the algebra we have. And now let me specialize to <coughs> to the light cone frame. So this becomes now this object is simply sigma zero e zero plus sigma z e z. And that is simply E times sigma zero plus sigma z so therefore let me write it here again Q alpha I Q bar alpha dot J anti commutator is equal to Twice e delta i j. <coughs> now sigma zero, sigma z is two in the upper corner and zero in the lower corner. So that tells me. Q1i, Q1 dot bar j is twice E delta ij. Well, four E and Qi e, Q2 dot j bar is zero. something this is oh, two two right and others in fact the one that I wrote was was also zero because one two one two is zero right so what does this tell me this tells me the algebra of in the uh, the, the, the spinner index two is completely decoupled from one. And not only that, all those generators are zero. They are zero, two, two is zero here, two, two is zero here, and two, two is zero here. So which means half of the supersymmetry is generators that are, don't have any algebra of, at all. So I can simply put them equal to zero. Equal to zero means that on any, every, any physical state they are zero. They don't change the physical state. While those with one 
they do change any state they act on. So we, we can, so we can put all q two i's and q bar two dot i's to be zero. Because all of them, amongst themselves, have anti-commutators which is zero, and they are zero also with the other other ones. So we are left only with supersymmetric generators, which have spinner indices, indices one q one i and q one q bar one dot. So let the, let's write them separately. But uh, we write them in a more convenient combination. So uh, introduce A i, which is q1 i divided by 4 root e, 4 times e root square root. And A i dagger to be q bar 1 dot i square root of 4 e. This is a convenient reno convenient normalization of these q1 and q bar 1 dot divided by root 4 e. And when I do that, what is the algebra of these a and a dagger? Nd commutator of a times a is 0, anti commutator of a dagger, a j dagger is 0, and anti commutator of a i and a j dagger is delta i j. So what we have seen is that for massless particles, describing them in a light cone frame, we have essentially only half the symmetries, uh, half the supersymmetries, because supersymmetries with the spinorial indices too have just gone away because they are on on states that will construct they are trivially zero because states would be so uh, would be invariant under those because the algebra they have is trivial algebra the only thing that we have is left with one half the supersymmetries and we have to study these representations of the supersymmetry algebra by simply analyzing the representation theory of fermionic oscillator of one set i running from 1 to n So only n charges as opposed to 2n supersymmetry charges that we had, for example, in the massive case. And we do the same thing there, is define a start, some starting state for this algebra. And we give it a name vacuum. This is not a physical vacuum, because this was the question we discussed in the beginning of so we start with some vacuum state, vacuum inverted commas omega, which is of given energy and helicity lambda. 
defined by that all A fermionic generators AIs acting on this starting state is zero. And then we build up spectrum by hitting this starting state or this vacuum state by A daggers. This algebra tells us that A dagger is a creation operator for some. Because this is nothing but a fermionic harmonic oscillator algebra. So we build up the representations of this algebra the same way we do it for harmonic oscillator, except with the exception that there you have commutators, here you have anti-commutators. So by successive application of operators, A i dagger, which remember was Q 1 i divided by bar 1 dot root 4 e. on omega by successive applications operator construct and representation of Suzy algebra. So let me write it in a table. State, the, the ground state with energy E, LSD <coughs> lambda, and let me count the number of states. Number of states, ground state is number of state is one, and this could be bosonic or fermionic. So this is bosonic, a static state could be bosonic or fermionic depending upon what lambda you have. If you have lambda integer value, it's a bosonic state. If the LST is half integer value, it's a fermionic state. And this one is identically same as n combinatoric number n sub 0, so c sub 0. And then operate EI, AI dagger on this. So AI dagger from the earlier argument we realized is that it uh, <coughs> Oh, I, I did this exercise. I, this lowers LST by half unit, but this was Q1. If you did the corresponding exercise with Q bar 1 dot, then it would increase the LST by half unit. So to the same algebra, if you remember the algebra, there was a difference of, I think I gave it an exercise one earlier, is that the commutator of Q's with M's and Q bars with M's have a relative sign. And that relative sign would change this to plus half. So this would increase the helicity by one unit. So let me, let me put helicity also here. Helicity and Bose or Fermi. Helicity is lambda here, so this is Bose or Fermi independent of lambda. So this is lambda plus half. And how many states are these? For every i, I have a new state. <coughs> i runs from one to n. 
So there are n such states. And if the starting ground state were a boson, this would be a fermion. If it was fermion, it, this would be a boson. Now let me operate two of them. A I1 dagger, A dagger I2 on. So since there are two of them, they will increase helicity by two half units. So that's lambda plus one. And if it was a boson, then it will just be again a boson. And if it was a, a vacuum was fermion, this would be again a fermion. But how many states would there be? Remember, these are fermionic operate, objects. So which means I1 and I2 cannot repeat their values. So I1 is not same as I2. And also, if I interchange these objects, that just simply changes the sign. That it's not a new state. So it counts simply the number of components of an n cross n antisymmetric matrix. That many states are created by acting two fermionic creation operators on this ground state. So that number is n into n minus 1 by 2, which is same as n c2. So similarly, you then operate three of them three creation operators, four creation operators, and finally you will have n creation operators. A dagger I1, A dagger I2, A dagger I, N on omega. Remember, no i's are repeated. So all this i1 is not equal to i2 is not equal to i3 is not equal to i n. <clears throat> so since there are n of them, what this tells us is that each a oscillator occurs only once in this product. So that means this state is only one. So that is one. And that is NCN. <coughs> and the helicity is lambda plus n by 2. Because there are. <coughs> n such creation oscillators, fermionic oscillators here, each one of them increases helicity by half unit. So this is lambda plus n by 2. Now is it a boson or fermion? If starting one was boson, then depending upon what n is, it would be boson or fermion. So if n is even, then it would be boson. If n is odd, it would be a fermion. Clear? And if the starting one was a fermion, then if n is even, it will be still be a fermion. This one also will be a fermion. But if n is odd, this one will be a boson. So therefore, I will not write it here because that's too many things to write.
and what is the total number of states it's simply sum of n c n n from 0 to n That's why I did not rub this off. Remember, for massive states, the number of states in a supersymmetric multiplet was 2 to the 2n, whereas for massless, it is 2 to the n. So you have only half the number of states. One. Anyway, and but half of these are are bosonic, and half other half fermionic. So number of bosonic states in a supermultiplet and number of fermionic states are always equal. Now let me go to n equal to 1. And let me take. So n equal to 1, vacuum state was. Some starting state with given energy and helicity lambda. And I have only one possible oscillator, fermionic oscillator here. And so I'll just remove this one on it. That gives me a state which is energy E and lambda plus half. For n equal to 1, I have these two states in the supermarket. But look at this, that this and this state don't make it CPT invariant combination states because a CPD invariant states should have both a given helicity and a negative helicity which is under chart conjugation I would go from one helicity state to opposite helicity state. So the representation that I have constructed is not a CPD invariant representation. Because the CPD invariant representation, along with having E lambda, should also have had E minus lambda, so that under conjugation they could go with each other. Particle antiparticle, and E minus lambda minus half. Sir, sir, a CPT invariant state should also have access for negative momentum. For in parity, hmm. we go from a plus p to a minus p, the three vector. Yes, and that changes z value to minus z. Right. 
So that's what we're talking about, right? JZ value. So which means we have to find methods of supplementing these in order to combine them into CPT invariant states. Now let me take a one particular example. Let me take omega to be the ground state is helicity 0. And then next excited state is helicity plus half. This makes a representation of the SUSI. Let me construct another representation. Take the ground state to be minus half. Density minus half. Then from here I can construct a state which is helicity zero. Now these together form n equal to 1 massless super multiplet, which is CPT invariant. So this is the antiparticle state of this, this is the antiparticle state of this. So in order to get the CPT invariant states, you have to combine two representations of supersymmetry. And this together makes uh, this super multiplet. This and this together combines into a fermion massless fermion with helicity up and down. Sir, so we have two uh, vacuum states here. Hmm? So we have two vacuum states, not one. You construct a CPT invariant as two representations constructed from two vacuum states. Two vacuum states is vacuum is not vacuum, right? It's not real physical vacuum. Two starting states which have the property that A acting on them is 0. So that's why I put a vacuum today in inverted commas. It's a starting state. It's not a physical vacuum. In fact, this is a some starting scalar state. And from that, I construct a fermionic state. From starting fermionic state, I create a, a scalar bosonic state. So this multiplet has two scalars and one Majorana fermion. This plus this make one Majorana fermion, E plus minus half, and two scalars here are E and 0 and E and 0, maybe prime, call it prime. Or otherwise, a complex scalar and a Majorana fermion. So when we do representations of SUSY algebra on fields, we do representations on, in terms of a complex scalar and a Majorana fermion for massless states. B. Now let me 
me construct another one. Start from let's say this is LST half. Act the fermionic creation operator on that. And there is also a name given to this multiplet. It's called scalar super multiplet. Scalar super multiplet has two scalars and one Majorana fermion. And then take another vacuum state or ground state, which is E and helicity minus half, uh, minus one. Remember, they are all massless. We are doing massless representations. This was the massless representation of scalar supermultiplet. Contains two, one complex scalar and one major fermion. This together is also CPT invariant because this object is CPT conjugate of that. This object is CPT conjugate of this. And this and this together form a Majorana fermion. So one Majorana fermion and one spin one massless, this is one massless. with two <coughs> LSTs plus one and minus one. A massless spin one object, massless vector state has only two degrees of freedom. Massless vector state is what a photon is. Photon is made of two helices. So this is a photon state. So in n, n equal to one supersymmetry, massless photon, photon is massless, has a super partner which is the Majorana fermion. Each of them have two degrees of freedom. And there's a name given to this, it's called vector multiplet. Vector super multiplet. Or a photon multi multiplet. So maybe let me go come to this side now. Let's start with the ground state.
which is helicity 3 half units and generate apply the fermionic oscillator on it generate a state with helicity 2 and then start with another ground state with helicity minus 2 and operate the fermionic oscillator on it this gives us a CPT invariant massless representation of Suzy algebra and it is made up of this multiplet <coughs> is made up of 2 helicity plus minus 2 states and 2 helicity plus minus 3 half states. Mass, this is a massless representation. Helicity plus minus 2 states are the 2 states of graviton. Graviton is spin 2 object, massless spin 2 object. It has only 2 degrees of freedom. And the super partner states of a graviton state are spin 3 half state, massless spin 3 half states. Again, these states have only two helicities and that is a gravitino. So, this is super gravity multiplet. Now let us go back to the general formula we have here for Ln. It can come with spin 5 by 2 also. That will be another representation. That will be another representation. And there is no reason to stop here, right? We can just do this. Yes, like there are all possible representations, all possible ways. These are the three that I constructed which are of interest. Okay. You can construct many more. And I will tell you why these, only these three are of interest. Why did not I construct others? Like he said, no, you start with and create spin phi half. That would give me a spin higher phi half state in my theory. And that will give me also, I can get spin larger than 2. Let us say phi half is out of 2, like spin 2 and larger than 2, massless states. So, there is a theorem. And I think George Sudarshan is one of those guys who constructed this theorem. Johnson's version or something. 
you cannot have consistent field theories for spins greater than 2. They turn out to be internally inconsistent. So, 5 half is not of interest. And also, you cannot construct any renormalizable field theories with massless fields of spin greater than 1. Renormalizable field theories of massless fields will have spin less than or equal to 1. And if you have massive 1, then even 1 is not allowed. Unless you generate mass in a very particular special way, which is spontaneous symmetry breaking. And if you don't worry about renormalizability, but you worry about the cons classical consistency, even classical consistent field theories can have spin only up to. Yeah, sorry, less, less. Which is right. If you attempt to construct higher spin, then you find that they have a constraint structure that emerges out of it, and that constraint structure has no consistent, self consistent solution. So that is why I constructed only these examples. There are other examples also but they are not of interest. Sir, so the fact that you did not start with E D 1 there to make a E 3 by 2 is linked to E in normalization. Okay. Sir, there also you started with the E half and made a e, e 1 state. I am saying you could have started with E 1 state and made a E 3 by 2 state. And yes. Uh, sir, thus you have a vector field also. Yes. That one was going to obtain a vector field uh, representation. Yes. So, that you can do due to the normalization? Uh, uh, no. Now, the point is that if I have to co construct a, a supercharge for it, uh, sorry, uh, CPT uh, um, uh, conjugate states, how do I construct CPT conjugate states? So, the same way like you have done here, you start with E1, yes. construct the E3 by 2, yes. then start with E minus Three by two and construct e minus one. Okay. Complete spectrum. Yeah. And, uh, and any state, if it is spin two highest, then it's you can construct a con consistent theory. But you cannot construct a normalizable theory. Even here, you cannot construct a normalizable theory for this. Just gravity is not normalizable in conventional sense, but a bit you can need normalizable. So it's not super gravity. Okay. Now let me look at this was n equal to one discussion. More general n. More general n. What is the highest value of n? Like we said, renormalizable theories, spin should be less than 3 half. That is up to 1. Let me make the statement highest allowed SUSY value for n number of generators is 4 for renormalizable massless field theories. 
does that appear here if n is 4 this is 2 then if, if I start with lambda minus half no this is 2 I can start with so it should not contain spin greater than uh, 1 it should not contain spin greater than 1 uh, So, should be minus 1. You, should, you put that in and you try to construct this multiple. You, you realize that if uh, 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 n is greater than 4, then there is no choice of lambda here that will give you a representation. Otherwise, you will always run into spins larger than 1. So, n equal to 4 is the highest value for n for a normalizable mass distribution and n equal to 8 is the highest value for consistent theories, spin theories, which means n equal to 8 is the highest value for supergravity theories. this is the highest value for 4. So, n equal to 4 is, is the highest value for Young mix theories. Young mix theories are theories containing spin 1 objects. Is that statement clear? That highest number of supersymmetries that you can have to describe spin one objects and their partners, scalars or fermions or whatever you have, is n equal to 4. Not n equal to 5, not n equal to 6, not n equal to 8. Because if they will not give you, they, they will always contain higher than spin one states. So that's why when people talk about young milk theories, even I earlier made remarks about n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 4, I never talked about n equal to 8. So you don't talk about n equal to 8 young milk theories because they don't provide a normalizable field theory. But if you don't worry about a normalizable field theory and then you want to go to uh, gravity, then even there the highest value for a gravity is n equal to 8. Because if you go higher than n equal to 8, then you will discover that you will have to bring in spins greater than 2, which means spins 5 halves, 3, and you cannot write consistent field theories with them, such high, high spins. I don't know if I should start on the next one. Next, I want to do supersymmetric algebra with central charges. So far, we are discussing the representation of supersymmetry algebra without central charges. Should we? I think I will stop here now because that will take more than 15 minutes. And we will come back to that next time. Th uh, Wednesday, there will be no class. So, we will meet on Friday. Is Wednesday a holiday? Hmm? Is Wednesday a holiday? No, Wednesday is not a holiday. But some of you want to attend the other meeting. So I said, all right, Wednesday would be off. So we'll meet on Friday.